Episode 37 of <laughs> this, the Knockoff Podcast, Knockoff Nation. There we go. It's Thursday. Cheers, boys. We've got uh, Danny's on deck in the uh, the new Jenna Studios, I guess. Jenna Street call Studios, it. what's up? We're up, we're up in here and uh, guest this evening, back by popular demand, uh, Josie. That first episode was uh, our first three hour epic, and uh, and we went deep. Very, very deep. So who, yeah, that's fucking putting Be it lightly, I'd say. Nice. <laughs> who, who, just getting warmed up. <laughs> who knows what uh, what direction this one is heading in? But um, you've j- seen uh, on your Instagram recently, though, uh, promotion around some work in a film. Like, can you elaborate on that a bit? Yeah, just um, filmmaking's been actually a new thing for me. The sort of past sort of four years. Um, I've taken a large interest in it. Like it just became like something like, oh, that'd be fun to do. And I did a little bit of short film work with a couple of friends and did a little bit of directing work, just made up a story and put things together and just started like learning in the industry on my own, like at my own time because I was like, oh, I'm interested. But, you know, I don't want to go and study it. I don't want to go to a fucking college. I don't want to, I don't want to do any of that. Mm. I want to try and do it on my own and mm. see if I can pull something off. Yeah. So I'm like... Matt, indie, indie sort of film yeah, style. Yeah, and, and I guess the type of um, content I'm releasing will be all combat orientated. And I don't want to do actual films. I want to do carters. So when you see, when you see like, an, like a montage, so when you see in a movie... Like, what are the bits you remember the most? Like the Rocky montage, mm. you know, when he's training in Russia. Like, you remember those bits, the music, the energy, you feel the vibe. Like, fuck yeah, like that was shit I remembered mm. when I was growing up. And same with like out of any fight movies like Conan the Barbarian. Like just that scene where he's swinging the sword and he's jacked. And I've seen, you know, seen that growing up. And oh, I, was I like, think I saw that like once mm. early and I don't remember it at all. Is dude, that, is that dude, Arnie? That's Arnie, yeah. Arnie, yeah. It's Arnie yeah. early days. That Big was his Arnie. breakthrough, wasn't it? You have to go and it? watch Conan... The Barbarian, which is the first one. Yeah. And then watch Conan the Destroyer, which is the second one. What Please. was that? Uh, you have to. The yeah, Last of the Mohicans. Film. What was that? Uh, totally Jared, different Jared, film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just slightly. Jared <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dances with no. wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Flash dance. Rain man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Man. But, but that, that's awesome, though. So you, you looking at sort of producing your own stuff. Have you, have you yeah. collaborated with other people for this one where um, you're playing a boxer? Because we saw some footage. It looked pretty like professional yeah. sort of... Yeah, and, that and was... you were um, playing the boxer, right? Yeah, I was just a, just like a bad guy. I didn't have any lines or anything like that. It was just for a mate. He had a short... They've got a short film coming out. And the, um, it's for a grad. It's a grad film. Sick. So obviously they've got their team and they have to create a movie and direct it and produce it and have it like look like the real deal and they get graded on it yeah right. so it was one of those um, it was really cool to be around like it got draining <laughs> yeah <laughs> sen- yeah because we did like that's why i don't think i could do film in in that sense because it's just yeah you hear like you I hear like when organic. people talk about it on podcasts and shit acting sounds like a gig where you have to sit around all fucking day and like you'll spend eight we did like eight hours on just of like one couple, take on um, not one but like pretty Pretty boring stuff. Yeah, like run it again, Josie. Yeah, yeah. one yeah. more time with feeling, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just I like get up for after three all, hours like, ago. You know what? I'm <laughs> fucking <laughs> back at this. I, I was listening to a potty once where they were talking to um, I can't remember. He's one of Rogan's mates, but he's like a filmmaker, Kevin James, maybe. Yeah, yep. And um, oh, the um, chubby dude. Uh, there's a uh, Kevin James. Oh no, who's no, a producer. no, Kevin James. Yeah, who did, yeah um, the other. K- J- there's two James Kevin James. Clerks and all that. Clerks too, and yeah, yeah, James yeah. and Bob, the other guy. That's right. right. Yeah, 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 that's him. Okay. Yeah, he's cool, man. I'll, I he, think I've uh, seen that one. He did a film with Bruce Willis, and apparently, like Bruce Willis, you know, maybe 2015 mm-hmm. or you know, late 2000s sort of thing. And apparently was just such a, like, a prick about everything. Was like, you know, uh, okay, do you, do you reckon we could do that one more and like sort of try it like this? You got the shot. <laughs> and just like, <laughs> just firing him. Just like really? fucking one take. That's all I'm well, giving Stallone, you. Phoning it in hard. Really? Just Stallone like, kicked them off. That's um, all I'm doing. Yeah, I'm not, not standing around It's not Die Hard with a Vengeance He's yeah. up in here. I'm yeah. done. Yeah. 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 I'm doing a Kevin James yeah. indie film. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter wants a fucking mansion. I'm just doing a film for her. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I heard some pretty shitty stuff about um, Bruce Willis. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't know how serious it is. Celebrity I, Goss 101 on the TKO. I Here we go, to, folks. I it's try. all alleged, man. <laughs> That's alleged. it. You know, you're covered now. Go for it. Like, <laughs> tee off. Tee off. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, nah, it was a. Um, I'm pretty sure it was obviously the Expendables, and to get him back for the third, because Stallone and everyone obviously chips in, and it's a fun thing for them. The way they all talked about it's like, oh, we had everyone together just doing cool shit. Mm. Um, apparently, he was the one all star cast that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the one that was demanding more money, right. and Stallone was like, "Fuck off, mate! Like we're all doing this for." You yeah, know what I mean? like yeah, true. Like, don't try and be bigger. Than, we're all, you know what I mean. Imagine being one of those type characters, like a John Travolta or a Bruce Willis or one of those fucking Denzel Washington. Just mate, mega, Denzel, mega Denzel, man, recognizable face. You're known for your face. Like yeah, that's mm. intense. People have just seen you on in all sorts of shit. People have sat there and watched you for like three hours. Hardest work. They've grown <laughs> up watching you several for sure. times for sure. Yeah. Spent yeah. years watching one character. There's a uh, hardest working man in Hollywood. Shout out the Rock. These days, he's oh. got his finger in fucking everything online. And probably everyone. And he's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> full, yeah. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out to all yeah. those I think he's finally Bad actually uh, married and had a kid. Yeah, he's, like, I think he's settled. Yeah. He already had some kids. He'd be in his 40s, wouldn't he? How old's The Rock? I'd say so. No, mate. He's like mid 40s. Yeah. Mid late 40s. Wow. Man. What a. And Impressive. what a beast. He's got. He's doing. He's filming ballers in between all of these Hollywood blockbusters. I know, man. He's a workhorse. Have, hey. you, have you seen much of ballers? I haven't even started it. Right. It's good. But I, I, it's good. I want yeah, to make you sure. You showed me um, a couple up. of episodes yeah. of that. Yeah. It's, I a, it, but I just, it's, a, it's a very easy, up. very easy watch. It's, have you seen any of Entourage before in Love the past? Entourage, man. Uh, this is Entourage with football. That's that's basically oh, what really? it is, man. It is t- twenty five minutes. Steph Curry cameos and like the, he works with his little business partner called Joe, who's like what, uh, this little bald actor who's fucking that plays a really good role. I couldn't yeah, remember. Right. Shout out Ballers. Oh no, no, I know, yeah. I know that dude. He's a he's a, does comedy. Yes, he's yeah. in Hot Tub Time Machine. Yes, yeah, that's the one. That's yeah. the one. I forgot his name, but he's awesome. Dwayne Johnson is forty five. Yeah, he's fucking doing well for forty five, man. Eh? Go to Dwayne Johnson and go like recently. Have a look at him at like forty five. Twenty seventeen. Yeah, he's got um he's got some uh mad greys coming up in his beard now. Yeah, right? yeah. You notice that, all right? He's aging. He's he's human. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. For sure. Did you see his um that one, yeah. uh Instagram video with John Jones after the Yeah, man, that was yeah. okay. He I don't think I've ever heard someone speak as well as The Rock. Oh, he's just... He's the best speaker. A monster. Like, the way he actually talks. Did you hear about him about... um? He looks different 45. there to... Um, he's go back to his wrestling like, one there. Like there. Yeah. Like, he's Oof. he's on the juice hard there. Yeah. Big boy. Like, he's real full there, just whereas... Jacked. Just jacked. There he is with CM Punk. Go to the CM. Go <laughs> that one with CM, CM Punk. Oh, you're a bitch, CM Punk. Nah, the one, but, yeah, uh-huh. that one, there you go. CM Sp- CM Guy spitting know. in his face Yeah Mickey Gall <laughs> He had to um, <laughs> He had to let CM Hot CM knife through butter in his face yeah, Hot knife brother. through butter Imagine what he was really thinking I could crush your head I could grab yeah. your how head How much for you to um, How much for you to Do WWE Man I'd do it for fucking nothing Yeah Yeah I'd uh, It'd be Imagine a very very small amount Yeah Yeah, yeah for I wouldn't sure need, I wouldn't need much to just go Alright fucking the next year, just I a guess year it would trial. depend on mm, what um, on what character you had. Daniel Vito went over and did uh, had a crack at WWE. You know the uh, ex Broncos Titans winger. He had a crack at WWE. Had some networking contacts over there and went and trained for. Did I'm, he pull I'm it off? say six months. Did he pull no, it off? no, because he's back not at, jacked. No, no. It, you like, got to get big. You he was get he, on the juice. He, he was be a wrestler. You got to get on the preci- juice. Precisely, I think for. They sort of saw him as a mini rock, like a bit of that Polynesian background the with Polynesian the tattoos without, and stuff. But without the size. That's right. Without the that HGH. Dude, boy, like, that new dude, fucking with long um, black hair and he's got that Polynesian. In the wrestling? Yeah, he's massive. Right. He's a beast. I'm trying to remember his name. Um, There's uh, uh, Roman Reigns, is that him? I think it's yeah, Roman Reigns. Right, yeah. 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 I've that, seen a little bit of stuff. That dude's a beast, man. I follow Holy a lot of shit. UFC personalities and quite a few of them do still like WWE. Like. Danny and I don't get down with it much at all, like aside from knowing like the major personalities of it. But Chris will still dig it. Really? Like, he really See, I, I don't yeah. think he watches it. Like, he I don't doesn't know. like doesn't watch it, but we'll be like, oh yeah, WrestleMania is on mad. Oh, the yeah, Undertaker's gonna take his crown and stuff. Like, not <laughs> obviously not oh, nah, super I serious. I've but stopped watching it. Yeah, yeah, I don't watch it anymore. But I enjoy seeing um just seeing fucking how juice they get. And mm. when McMahon walks out and he, he's like jacked as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, when the he owner wasn't always is jacked, jacked eh? Yeah. No, he got big, he, man. He Lorenzo Vitita? Yeah. How yeah, big did Lorenzo get at one point? Dana White. Oh. 
You look at so Dana, Dana or, White's nutty. Really? Oh, dude. man, he got <laughs> on it for sure. He's, uh, if you go back to Ultimate Fighter One, Dana. Old Dana. Where, Forrest Griffin, you are the ultimate fighter. He's got like these gaps in his teeth and yeah, he's still got yeah. hair and Dana, stuff. Dana got Hollywooded up oh, to he the shit house. For as sure. if you wouldn't. For, oh, Boy, yeah. as if you wouldn't. As if you wouldn't. He's not getting tested. Oh, look at uh, look at Wahlberg there in and out of season. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he goes from one extreme to the other. Mm. Go Vinny Mac on the left. Look at that. Jeez. On the left. Tell, the left oh, look at those quad, me didn't Quadzilla. Telling me he didn't hell. end up getting uh, sourced. It's a lot of chicken breast. Bananas. Go back. The one on the left, keep going. Yeah, on the on the, yeah. <laughs> no, on the, the barbell, the barbell, next to it. Oh, you looking at yeah. that? This oh. one. <laughs> that's something. I want to. I want to look like that at like fifty. Oh, that's, that's something you see in that. Old, that's something I'm you see in that. I'm gonna uh, get jacked like that and be like fifty in grey. I have nothing else. To, to anyone do. listening to this, we're just like, oh, that one. Yeah, that yeah. one, that one. <laughs> you see a photo like that. It's something you see on one of them old versus young sort of yeah. like, uh, <laughs> websites. <laughs> We did it. I knew we'd go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were only t- talking off air before about uh, first time when Josie came on about some of the uh, the atmosphere was electric. We just let our guards down and it's talked just, about like, it was pornography on. habits and, and, and all sorts of noise. Yeah, we just shared that. with, And that's out there now to the world. Yeah, that's so, right. So Dirty. I apologise to anyone that I know. I'm not shying away from it, but, you know, we're all uh, we're It all is humans. what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I had a glance at the UFC website uh, today. Pretty lean there for the next couple of weeks, man. Yeah. They sort of went all in on that two fourteen. Yeah. Well get McGregor Mayweather out of the way, and How then really get on the now? two, two weeks away. Yeah. Fuck. That's it. Mm. What? Uh, what are your thoughts? What do, you, what do you think, man? We've had we've it's talked ad nauseum amongst ourselves. We're keen to get your take on it. For a glorified moron that doesn't know combat sports at that level, just by by my honest opinion. Mm-hmm. In a boxing match, uh, it's hard to go past Mayweather, man. Like, it, like I don't like doubt. I do like the underdog thing. Mm. You know what I mean? Even though Mayweather's forty, I'm like defensively, probably the most prettiest boxer to watch. I mean, the guy's incredible. You can't go past that. As a person, he's, I'm not like a fan. Mm. Um, but as a boxer, I mean, one of the greatest of all time. For sure, you can't go past that. The the only thing that gets me is Connor's confidence. That's even sheer on confidence. Like even if it doesn't have that skill level of boxing, but the way he trains, the way he talks, the way he walks, the way he fucking is I mean, I reckon he's in Floyd's head. For sure he he, he can't not be. Mm. But a MMA guy beating a boxer of that caliber he's for someone who hasn't fought professionally, I don't know, man. He's like, really uh I don't uh, it's a tough. It's a tough one because the power. I mean, Mayweather's fought guys with power. He has. Canelo's yeah. got fucking power. That's the I thing. Mean, geez, even though he was young, Canelo's got some serious power. My argument is to. Uh, I'm tipping Floyd as well, and for very similar reasons. I'm well. putting I'm money. Like, I'm going to put money on McGregor just purely because if he wins, you're going to get yeah, a good if you, return. If you can put your twenty dollars on. Hey, yeah. you're la- laughing all the way to the bank or whatever. And but I wouldn't mind just seeing boxing get dumped on its head. I mean, just for something different. Mm. Just because... It would upset the apple cart for sure. It would. Be, it'd it would. And shock. I reckon it would open the door for more crossover fights. Mm. And, you know, if that happened, then boxing pretty much at the moment would dominate. Mm. I mean, you're not going to get anyone... Like, you wouldn't get McGregor. If let's it, say, if let's it say was he, all at boxing. You let's, mean? let's say he wins this, right? Let's just say... Who? McGregor. McGregor. Right, just for a hypothetical... And then obviously he realizes the money he can make in boxing is if he won't do another boxing fight. If he beats Mayweather, he'll be on such a confidence high. All right, I'll take fucking Gennady or Canelo. That's where right. Paulie is almost angling for a fight with him with all the shit that they're talking to each other. I just I just think that if McGregor does do that and comes up against one of those dudes, he's a completely different animal. Like Triple G would murk him. Absolutely. Triple G would murk Conor McGregor. Yeah, it would be bad. It would be. It wouldn't be nice to watch. Like he would destroy him. So I, I think that. I think if Conor can just do this fight, it's a money fight, and go back to MMA because I enjoyed watching him MMA. Oh, you know, let's do it. It's getting a bit crazy. Be able to make some sick fights for him. Yeah, at lightweight. If yeah, he came back. He's doing like at he's doing his weight, thing. Really. He's making his money, but I th- just come back to MMA, man. I think uh, I've always said that argument too about the power where. If the Hall of Famers that have fallen short against Floyd, what makes Conor any different? If you exactly. put if you put 
Oscar De La Hoya, R- Oscar R- Rick, Hoya. Ricky Hatton, Juan Manuel Marquez, Mosley, Manny, Pacquiao, Canelo, yeah. Cotto. If you put a four ounce glove on them and crack you clean, they're going to sleep fucking anyone. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I mean, those 100%. dudes know how to punch. And I've, uh, yeah, I, I'm, st- I'm still Team Floyd, but in terms of Connor, like you're saying, He's the king of manifesting shit in his own he head. He really man. has done he that. He has man. everything. You he's can't deny anyone can't deny that he is. He's self marketed. Yep, he's all, a genius. That's right. He's all a bar all bar one time when he lost to Nate, in which twenty four hours later he's like, "Run it back, I'll beat him," and comes back and does it. He mm. he is so good with the the whole mindset his mentality of fighting. Yeah. He makes epic decisions every single time. Yeah, you got to you got to you got to respect that as a, as a martial artist. I completely respect the hell out of him. Oh, what, to just jump he, in there, all right? I'm to be that sure of yourself that you're gonna mm. beat Floyd Mayweather. You just got to respect that fucking level of cockiness, man. You have to. And, and I you, think you're right to say that he is a genius. You know, like yeah. what he has managed to do in he such a short amount of time. Mayweather. It's he insane. started baiting it. Like he's yeah. fighting arguably the biggest name ever in fight mm. fight sports history, and he got himself there from rags to riches in a in a short amount of time really yeah it's impressive and floyd smart too to recognize he's seeing those instagram followers go up for connor it's a generational seen thing him rise too with yeah, absolutely yeah, for sure is. where there would be a lot of people like millennials and shit now who are 18 19 years old that have never seen floyd mayweather yeah fight exactly. maybe once they might have seen him fight manny but before that unless they were hardcores i have to they probably haven't seen self confess bro self confess yeah. that, that's that it, was yeah. the first first floyd fight i'd seen right really yeah, yeah. see i'd i've seen a Dating back to... I hadn't seen early shit, but probably dating back as far as, like, Ricky Hatton and shit for me. I've seen qu- quite a lot of them from that point onwards. And I was, like, the whole... When he went from Pretty Boy Floyd to Money May it was when I really sort of, like, jumped on board where when he started to be Money May with the Big Boy Mansion and all that shit, that's yeah. when those sort of countdowns were like, See, look at I, this, that's, dude. That's when I lost it. Really? Yeah, right. I, I don't respect that sort of shit. Yeah. It's not, a, not that I don't respect that they've gotten themselves there. Mm. But like seeing that doesn't like make me go, oh, you respect. Yeah. Like seeing the humble fucking dad that's at home with his family, sort of. Yep. You know, yeah, they may have money, but they're not. Yeah, see, parading I, it. With I, all the I, cars I get and like flashing that cash on. That's not my thing, man. I think I'm sort of I'm so far removed from that <laughs> lifestyle that I see it. I don't sort of see it and be like, damn, I want that. I'm like, yeah, look at this fucking dude. <laughs> like, look like at it's this a character fighter. sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is this yeah, is Floyd yeah. in a club, <laughs> <laughs> wearing a uh, wearing a jacket like a blazer. That's basically hundred dollar bills, hundred dollar bills blazer. with a big collage. smile on his face, <laughs> and he's like <laughs> holding like, stacks of ten thousand. And there's diamond, five of them, diamond encrusted le- glasses with no lenses, <laughs> and like a. A French Riviera those glasses, like top hat. Those glasses would be worth a million bucks. Of like a million bucks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guy's got money. He do- oh, he doesn't he? You don't know. change your name to Floyd Money Mayweather if you ain't got money. On the uh, the it. most recent All Access, he's taking his kids. Look at Floyd with hair in that photo there, man. Jeez, he looks different. He looks so different with hair. That's that young Denzel. Shit, like. that's yeah, him. Denzel. <laughs> that's yeah. I liked him then. I liked Floyd when he was younger. That's young Floyd. Pretty boy Floyd. Look at yeah, what a uh, two weeks two weeks away. A little, little away. bit more aggressive too when he was younger. Definitely had a bit more of a come forward style. Had uh, had some concerns with his hands in recent times that have sort of made him go the other way. But it's just that adaptable that he's all right. Well, I'll just turn myself into the best defense. Like crazy. Well, I think that's probably, I think that's probably what happened. Mm. Like he probably busted his hands and gone. All right, maybe there's a better way to do this. Yeah. Without take, well, because ne- the guy never takes damage, man. I, yeah, I can outpoint people here. No dramas yeah, at I'll all. Just, I'll just all box. Mm. I'll box. Yeah. Why? Why do I have to? I the one thing I flee. Agree with him. Sorry, a flee. That's not even a fucking word. Yeah, the guitarist from Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> yeah, flee. <laughs> like. Can't stop. The <laughs> yeah. I agree. with Flea's take on it was epic, man. Like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I'd like to quote it this time yeah, is yeah. Uh, flee. <laughs> I think Flea said it best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he's talking about Mayweather. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but somehow we're more credible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Flea. Yeah. Uh, but I, I like I, I liked um the just the the attitude he has about why do I have to take punishment? Mm. I can make a lot of money. You, I'm entertaining because he's still entertaining to watch. Mm. Anyone that knows a little bit about boxing, knows that he's slick and not take damage and keep your brain and set yourself up as a businessman. Mm. I think he's fucking incredibly smart. What, um, t- 
talking, touching on head trauma there. What uh, we saw Billy Slater cop a nasty concussion against Canberra uh, two weeks ago. He copped a really bad late hit from uh, Sia Soliola. Did you, en- did you ever end yeah, up seeing that? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. What constitutes a send-off in the NRL at this point? Like that, that was late and really high at that point. He didn't even go to the bin. Yeah. So, like, I think it has to be ten minutes for that. Surely. Like, I thought like, he was going to get sim bin. Yeah, I, I, I instantly thought send-off when watching it live. But I'd had a uh, had a couple of billies in about five years, <laughs> so, so I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> he took Billy's head off. Like, fuck again, get, get get him off, sort of thing. But he had. Um, at what point does he have? Um, at what point? Is there a send-off? But concussion protocol, where well, they're talking about Billy gets knocked out. Apparently, he's unconscious for up to three minutes out on the field there. Like, took Fuck. a lot to come through. It was a bad one because he got hit high and then hit, like, it was basically a head slam into the ground as well that, uh, that he copped. And did they're he like, get put yeah. a report? Yeah, he got six weeks. Yeah. See ya, did for yeah. it. But um, he's got... Uh, Oh, fuck, where was I going? Billy, uh, they're talking about Billy training week to week and they're like, oh, he's day-to-day this week. Uh, not sure if he's going to play next weekend. It's like, fuck, if you've got that, uh, a bad KO like that, you wouldn't I'd, be I'd, wanna see, I'd so. like to see you have a fortnight off in, in that sort of situation. Where at least. Look, we're looking just, at like... Just, just rest the... They don't, they're just numbers, man. Yeah, me- medical, uh, medical st- people in the UFC get like a 90-day suspension after yeah. a concussion, 100, like 180 days like suspension that, and stuff. It's Most great. definitely. It's great. Yeah. But uh, it's great. in footy, they seem to be happy to back up on 10 days. Like, you know what I mean? they don't give a fuck, man. Yeah, it's way it is. Australia's yeah. a little bit of a backwards place, man. That's They're pretty ruthless here. For sure. And we'll That's see. the culture with it a fair bit. Even even growing up playing footy as a kid, Tough though, up, it's mate. like, yeah. Get up, mate. You'll be right. Even, even, your, even your own, you know... Desire you want to get back in there as soon as possible. You're like, Doc, how many weeks? Like, three to four. Okay, we'll make it fucking two and a half. Like, yeah. you know? We um, played against, uh, we had a bloke in our high school footy team who played in the back. We'll remain nameless, but just love staying down. Like, just love staying down. I remember we played against, uh, D- and Danny was captain. He was like, Danny played above his weight at high school, like, for yeah. sure. H- had more size on him, fucking potentially. Could have gone to like maybe like a premier grade sort of Q yeah, cup yeah, sort yeah. of like spec level, but yeah. he was captain of our team and this fella would stay down all the time. Played a game at um, what? Like, just get a get a shot put on him. Like I'm not getting that. Yeah, like just oh my, I think I broke my my ankle. Like oh my, AC, maybe my ACL. Like check it and then just get up and play on. He'd always yeah. stay down. Like fake to seizure. Yeah, that's where that's where I'm going with it. Man, we're playing <laughs> against Mara Stashgrove and he's like. With fucking big big <laughs> rivalry name with names, yeah. but like completely outlined who it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> playing against for, yeah for all the blokes on our team. Shout out brother, about, it's yeah. all love. And he's uh <laughs> like just missed a tackle, like a blatant two on one out like out wide comes in like on a shooter trying to be a hero, and they just do nice hands out wide. They score, and he goes down in the uh for like fucking hell, like boys get together, and then he just lays down on the ground and is like, <laughs> like <laughs> having a fit. like pretending to convulse. And Danny straight up, I'll never forget, he's like, fucking get up, like, <laughs> person's name. And this dude's like, oh, yeah, fuck, sorry, boys. Like, just call this bluff hard, man. Straight up, oh, I don't think, I don't think he, uh, I don't think he admitted to it. I, think I he, thought he did. Oh, nah. That's yeah, a, I think he probably groggily sort of, like, came to or whatever. Right. But, yeah, oh, I just knew that but, he was, you know, like, taking you, the piss. You are basically half disabled when you're growing up, you know? As a kid, the brain is still forming. You're oh, not quite fuck, fully yeah. a human yet. So yeah. everybody as a kid is is by definition like somewhat crazy, you know? Oh, 100%, mate. I was a maniac. I can remember. I was a yeah, maniac. Yeah. I, I did all maniac. kinds of like strange and <laughs> fucking stupid just stuff. Weird, just weird shit. Yeah, yeah. Just weird <laughs> stuff. Man. You find yourself in some positions where you're going... Because I think you're just so sort of malleable. I think the older you get, you get more sort of set in your ways until you're like... Old people, man, they don't like shit change into their routine. Yeah. They like concrete yeah. s- set in their ways, you yeah. know. And uh, it's five past five. Where is my meal? Like, <laughs> fucking, like whoa, shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, old age is a motherfucker, right? That's a. That's I don't think about it. Yeah, well, we're we're fortunate enough that we're sort of at that age where we're not we're like just slightly starting to become aware of it we're like yeah. oh shit i got a couple of greys there but like that's it you know yeah, what yeah. i mean like that's it it's still essentially we're in the bulk part of the prime here you know what i mean i was thinking about it last night and i was like if i the, i was watching something where the go- guy died at 81 some some musician died yesterday i can't remember uh like a rhinestone cowboy that dude really oh, who's that can't remember his name like a rhin- uh 
I can't even. I Kenny can't Rogers even, or something. Like no, 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 no. It's not Kenny know. Rogers. But no. Anyway, that's, that's it. <laughs> First name that came He died at 81. Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> We're no, laughing. No, mate, died. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, no, he lived a great life, man, like, and, and, and deteriorated a little bit. And, and what do you reckon? 81's not a bad age. Died at 81. Fuck, man, I'd be, I'd be happy if I lived. Live to if you were good till 81, I reckon. Yeah, right, yeah, totally. Yeah, um, I've had a good run. But I thought about it and I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's fucking ages away. And then, I, and then I kind of thought about it and I was like, shit, if I'm 30, that's like not that far away. 50 years. That's another 50 years. But then is that, is that a long time? Like imagine another 50 years. I was sort of contemplating, you know, if I'd been decaying for another 50 years, would I sort of be like, yeah, you know what, I'm good. Mm. I'm good. Do you want to know? Do you want to know? Had, I've had a sweet run. This is... This is all a bit of a drag now, being yeah, almost, this old and decrepit. You do get to a point where you want to tap out. Like, absolutely. absolutely. I'm the op- man, I'm the opposite. You are now, but what, what about, like, what about you, at yeah. 98? If yeah. you had, if I had... 98, seen, you might yeah. be like... Oh, Have you seen what's happening with, in like, bag. where the, the future of fucking... Absolutely. They reckon the first 150-year-old person has been born, like, in, in today's yeah. day and age. They've yeah. been saying that since 2015. Yeah. They're like, we reckon that like from this time onwards, somebody will live to 150. Should be the next record. I, I don't even think about that. I reckon that you can get to a point where you don't age. Like the whole downloading consciousness thing, mm. I've been obsessed with like looking into that. Nice. And I'm not a... Singularity. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a person that can sit here and, and like tell you statistics and yeah, shit. Yeah, but no, it's a, Elon it's a, Musk and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but I'm a... Um, I'm, Definitely curious about it. And I think that if this meat suit's only good for about fucking 70, 80 years, mm. I'd rather see more, man. I'd rather see where humans go. Like if, yeah. we, if we can download our consciousness and then all of a sudden, you know, all plug right, in, your, your body's done, mate. Let's fucking, you're there and then in your brain. Mm. If you can get it the same and put it in another human body and then you, well, you're good for another fucking however many years, mm. you get a turny through it. Have you ever watched uh, Black Mirror? Yeah. Yeah, there was one... Uh, there was Did one they do one on that? I watched the other night, yeah, and it was like... Um, that show's fucking off to... Like, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. For anybody who hasn't seen it. I watched it. the first one only and that's it. It messes you up. The one with the, uh, the Prime Minister with the pig and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's old school, yeah. yeah. I'm like, oof. It's full I'm on, out. man. Yeah. Yeah, you've always got to try and figure out what's going on. They'll leave you yeah. sort of like they'll throw you a bunch of clues at the start and nothing makes sense and then eventually you work it out. But for anybody who hasn't seen it, it's sort of like set in the not too distant future and it's all, each episode is a different story entirely and they're all of these short stories about potential problems or issues that we could run into as society due to our advancements in technology, technology. and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, there's one that I watched the other night where it's basically like this app for the aging or dying and you download your consciousness into this like little plug-in that goes on your temple and you can basically go to any time you can set it to like 1987 and it's like every year is like a club so there's all these people using the different app going saturday night i'm going to 1993 like well, what are you doing in 1993 and shit like that and um and it's basically like you can you can start to do it and come back into reality like dreamings type of thing yeah, like yeah. where you kind of realize it's not totally real but you're living in this program and it's like wow how's like this the video matrix. game that we're like playing the matrix. and it's like two old people but in their in their program in their app they're like super young and like vibrant and it's actually the story about these two lesbians that have like a love affair and shit it's it's a sick show for anybody who hasn't seen it, but it um, is hectic. And and to everyone listening, but it's the, not for the faint hearted. But the idea of it is like is interesting and it, and it goes to what you're talking about, sort of downloading your consciousness. There's there's this element that they sort of play with in the episode where it's like you're always gonna be sort of like that is slightly second best, you know. There's there's yeah. some sort of thing that even if you get a really realistic app that's basically like, you know, virtual reality or whatever there's going to be some element to it that's like you can't engineer it i don't know maybe that's just me and a hippie viewpoint but it's kind of like you could be right man there's you know how do we how do we like ai like love or something like that you know like how do we ai that sort of tangible quality to life they say it's a chemical reaction compassion or love is that the feeling it's actually a chemical reaction in the brain so unless Mm. they can have that of like scent and stuff like that too yeah Yeah, maybe they can maybe they can engineer that shit maybe they can engineer love who knows man i mean that's pretty crazy If, if if that's the case how are we not a program now to some other alternate 
thing. You know what I mean? To some old yeah. alternate thing going on. I think I've always carried this like strange sort of like half fantasy in the back of my head that my life is actually like the Truman Show and everything's just being filmed and yeah. I'm, I'm the only one who's not aware of it and everybody else are actors. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're, here a- we're here acting? Like, we're a- yeah. It was like stronger. Talking about like weird shit that you would do when you were a kid, it was much stronger when I was a kid. I, b- I barely ever like think about it anymore. But when I was a kid, it was this weird sort of like thought that I would play with on a regular basis and stuff. Like, you, what if? Do you want to know my, that w- what my fantasy was? Because I, obviously I mentioned a little bit, we went over it briefly on the last podcast, podcast 30, guys. Yeah. Um, like astrophysics, mm. it's like a mini passion of mine. I'd love like to go interstellar, planet travel, just to see. Mm. Like, I mean, what an experience. Yeah. Like I would put my hand up and go, all right, well, if you may not come back, but to know that you saw what you saw or to go to another planet or something. I would mm. do it, man. Oh, it'd be you'd wild too. I would do and to it. be known as that person that went, and even if you didn't come back, there's a legacy there. Like, man, he he just fuck. He left. went. Who knows? He like, just where did he go? We, we don't. We don't actually know. Like, yeah. he, he was lost in the system somewhere there. He could he and could you could be somewhere still else. Alive. Like, you, yeah, for sure. Because of how the, obviously time works, mm. space time. I mean, if we're traveling at the speed of light at home, there thirty. We're going for years, you know. They die. We're still quite young. Oh yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah. 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 Do you know, the yeah, end of, shit, you know what? I, I went to Interstellar high as a kite, and I went to that movie, and we watched a Gold Class, and the sound, obviously, no, nice. and the music. I haven't seen that, dude. Oi, yeah, come on, man. Nice. You that got, and you, Conan Two is on yeah. the <laughs> Conan, <laughs> on the list. Conan One and Two, I've guys. Seen one. You got to see. Yeah, you've seen Conan the Barbarian how it oh, starts. Yeah, yeah. He's pushing that big thing at the That's start. That's right. Wait, go to um, yeah, space one of these. Look at that. This is uh, what a uh, Chris Hatfield. He was the dude that stayed up in the space station for fucking ages. The uh, yeah, right. lead singer of Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> Brother of James. Yeah, James Hatfield. This guy, man. Oh, wow, look at that. Space Oddity on YouTube is the uh, video we're watching. Here. Wow. See, look at that. What an experience. He's doing a cover of. Uh, David Bowie. Wow. He was up there for months and months and months, man. Like, he uh, he did, like, a brief podcast on, on Joe Rogan and basically they were talking about his body readjusting back to gravity and he was saying, the f- like, it's like a month, month, like, multiple month process in order to come back. Like, years even, he was saying, for your, for your bones to come back. Like, it takes a while for your muscles to come back, for your, yeah. like joints and bones and everything like he was just like rotten rottenly sick for weeks and weeks and weeks until wow. he gets gets his equilibrium back and then starts to build up his muscles again but just from being in this suspended no gravity stage for so long so did he stay no gravity the whole time he had weed up there and shit i'm pretty sure <laughs> what? He, what? Sm- he smoked weed up there he's canadian what but you had pornography up there as well did he oh he would have <laughs> you'd have to yeah yeah Imagine just letting mine off though. And That's exactly right. Gravity. That's right. Make it pretty easy to clean up. You just fucking come past with like one of your little bags and just. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> he had a photo of. Um, I'm no. going, but only if you give me a pound. Like, I can look at the size of that. Fuck, 100 grams of OG Kush. Wow. Good on him. Good for him. Yeah, good on him. Someone's got to <laughs> chop the dildo in that yeah. one. <laughs> 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 People are fucked. Oh, I have <laughs> fucked the internet. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> did, did you did you guys watch the South Park episode on trolls? Trolls, yes. like trolling. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, they hammer them, eh? That's the but in a funny way, twenty or something. Yeah. 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 Fucking funny, man. South Park is the shit. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. I know all the Family Guy listeners right now. I'm a big fan, but you don't go to the level. You can't fuck with. You can't fuck with South Park. Trey Park. You cannot fuck with those dudes. It's in the uh, episode of. They do not. They will not hold back on. Anything no. and, and they'll so, go anyone. I think it's actually which one's the blonde dude? Is that um, Trey? Trey, yeah, Trey. He's he's apparently the brains behind the operation. Yeah, Trey's bit. hectic. Mm. If he, you watch he's the one that's got the the mind to like direct everything, you know. Whereas mm. Matt's more like his, you know, bounces off him. Yeah, sort yeah. Of thing. They they wouldn't be as good without each other. Yeah, totally they'd be, not. Like, totally like Hamish not. and Andy. They're like 50-50. They yeah, wouldn't yeah. be, you know, like, oh, because I write all the, you know, no, no, direction they, and stuff. One would need one for the other. It'd just be 50-50 down yeah. the line with those boys, I reckon. For sure. That basic, Have you seen the Basketball the movie scenes seems like it would be um, 
pretty indicative of what their like high have school experience was, was like. Oh, have you seen it? Which? Yeah. Basketball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck this, yeah. Um, yeah. It's in the episode of the, it's one of the more recent ones of South Park, Cock Magic. <laughs> where they've got this rooster that plays um, like Warhammer cards and like yeah, Randy, yeah. But Randy, Randy does his dick tricks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's a, and all like the cops an, are like... An instant classic. <laughs> yeah. Like cheering like, it. So where's this rooster? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, it is all time. They play with some strange concepts, eh? Yeah. And I because they it. do... There's a doco six days to air where they run through their whole sort of process and it's literally six days that they do an episode. I've seen that. That week. I've seen that. And because of that, they can do topical issues like straight away because they're it's making the episode relevant. that week. So yeah, it's relevant. like, you know, fucking... Black China ran off on <laughs> Rob Kardashian. <laughs> let's let's tear shreds. Bruce you know? Jenner is on there a lot, or Caitlyn is yeah. actually well, on Caitlin's there. Caitlyn's yeah. a regular mm. in that whole season. <laughs> That's I think. right. It is true. Yeah. It's a, it's like a it's foundational a soapy, yeah. character. Yeah, that yeah got the now. Caitlyn right. Jenner stays on <laughs> South Park now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's crazy how they've just been able to get past all of those sort of defamation laws and shit, though, and do it in such a way where it's like, fuck, can they do this? Legal but team would be yeah, A1 can. that they've got yeah. Comedy Central yeah. legal team behind them. Well, they, um, in that doco, they were sued a lot. Oh, yeah. They were sued a lot. And Kanye go yeah, after him and shit. Yeah. <laughs> the gay fish. fish. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Holmes? You fish like fish sticks? <laughs> I love fish sticks. <laughs> But what's interesting in that six days to air doco is their publicist or public relations person and you see them on the phone because the episode that they're doing on that doco is the human centipede one mm. where they oh, like yeah. do the human centipede story but it comes out to some sort of like tablet device <laughs> 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 and everything is uploaded into the cloud and it's like when you sign the like agreement, you're signing your like self to be like sewed to somebody else's asshole, your mouth and stuff. <laughs> And she's like, and so she's on the phone and she's like, um, will they be defecating in each other's mouths? Um, I'm not sure. I know they'll be, they'll be sewn. I'll have to check if there's defecating. Like she's just like, you know, having to speak really matter of factly and business orientated about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're just in the room, just like, fuck, can we get away with this? <laughs> like coming up with the most outlandish shit that they can think of. I love, I love them, man. I reckon they're absolute geniuses. Yeah. And I love... Did you see the footage when they rocked up to the Emmys? Or is it the red carpets? Yeah. And, yeah. and they're wearing yeah. frocks. Dresses. <laughs> and they didn't address anyone's questions. Yeah. Like, so, it's uh, a beautiful yeah. evening. Are you confident here this evening, guys? Oh, it's a beautiful evening here. Fantastic. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> so glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, oh, we so actually fun. imagine that. No, think oh. about right now. You're out there to the world. <laughs> no, thank the you. The biggest celebrities in no. the world. Mm, you get on you. acid and wear a dress. And cross dress, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That might um, send me over the edge. Oh, I, don't, I yeah. might not come oh. back from that one. Yeah, that's still <laughs> wearing the dress <laughs> like a decade later. Like, oh shit, man, that he's cool. <laughs> they got him. They got him. <laughs> Josie, you're just getting ready to tell us about uh, something Conan the Bar- Barbarian related. I've just gotten a picture of Arnie in his pri- have primer. A look, have a look at him, and he's uh, running towards you, dressed like a a Mohican Indian or those big something with a he's giant a- sword Aztec. covered in blood. And uh, here's a scary proposition coming to coming at you at pace like that. Yeah, that that's a scary looking man there. Jeez, Arnie was a savage in his. Oh, can I? He was. Go to, look at that one on the left. Years, eh? <laughs> that one on the left. If you're looking at, uh, <laughs> if anyone's oh, right now, geez. go go to Conan the Barbarian, and just look Arnold Schwarzenegger, Conan the Barbarian. So you're looking at trying to uh, produce something along the lines of your own. Yeah, I want to film do with. Carters and combat scenes sort of thing? Just you, you're trying scenes. to simulate a... Just the scenes. Yeah. So I don't want to really do... Like, I'll do a bit of a lead up, but not really. I don't really mm-hmm. want to do any, like, staged acting sort of scenes. Like, I want yep. to do these crazy fight sequences where they're like... Like, there's one the one scene with Arnie where he's, like, swinging that sword and he just looks jacked. And also, That's there's awesome. a kid that may want to lift weights. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get jacked one day. Just because mm. Arnie. That was actually a thing for me. I was like, I got in, inspired by that. So I've always wanted to go back as an adult and try and sort of pay my own tribute to it. Mm. And be in a position where I can understand how the camera works. I can train my body enough to get quite big. Mm-hmm. You know, I could grab shit if I wanted to grab it and put on the meat. Get on some of those supplements. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't worried about that shit. <laughs> you know, so like when you think about it, if I can sort of reenact and 
mm. do like a crazy act scene or a sword scene or anything like that. I'm like, yeah, I'll give it a crack. That would be awesome. If you check like out... A, mod- a modern style, you know, just have a different take to it. Not try and recreate anything that's been done, mm. but take an old idea with a modern, like obviously art to it. Orientation. Orientation. Yeah, that's awesome. And obviously just sort of dump stereotypes on its head. So cross cultures. That's sick. Great. You know, it could be uh, Western martial art or an axe style martial mm. art, but shot dramatically like a Kung Fu sort of film. There's you know a bit of I mean? that on your Instagram recently too. Check it out uh, at, at Josie James. You're using a yeah. bit of Do- straight Donatello shit with that <laughs> pole. <laughs> that's some, that's, yeah, that's awesome. I, I've i always learnt since I was a kid, Ninja Turtles was my thing, man. Mm. That's what actually got me into martial arts. And we were talking about that yeah. last time, yeah. Episode 30, guys. Yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> R- rating smash it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was. I always liked all the, the bow staff, the sai, um, the katana, um, and the nunchucks, obviously just because I was a huge Turtles mm. fan. But then when I got old enough, and because I'd, I'd been studying my whole life, I was like, I actually will try and learn these weapons. Mm. And I had no interest in my teen years. I just got caught up in footy and... Mm-hmm. Chasing girls and partying and all that sort of stuff. But now, in the past sort of few years, I've really been picking up the weapons again just to have a play. And um, I found it's been almost like the way I unwind. Mm. So I'll go, I'll go pick a beautiful spot. Somewhere. I was going to ask you that. It almost seems like for you it's it's more of a meditative type. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Practice. It, or it, it really yeah. is. And it and I, at the moment, I'm not – like this isn't any of my serious stuff. I call it free flow. Mm. So – when you see a traditional like karate, like karate kata, right? The old what is a kata? So it's just a it's a form. So obviously you set movements, reenacting. Like a routine of sorts. A routine, yeah. And they all have different meanings and different purposes like right, kung okay. fu and, and karate and katas and forms. I don't want to break any of them down because I might do it injustice. Sure. But you know what I mean? Like for the guys, that, the purists that are listening. Big obviously. rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But the, the way it's obviously shot, Originally, it was obviously for self-development as well. So when you're going a movement extremely slow, you're watching exactly how precise that movement is Mm. and you're obsessing over every inch, every centimetre on target. You know how they do it the old school way and they do it fast and they do it slow. It's obviously, if you break down the science of it, because as I got old enough Mm. and I started learning physiology and about the body and training, I actually saw the muscle memory that it has like, the connection from the brain to the body, Mm. slowing something down so precise and then that movement becomes 10 times better when you throw it normal. Yeah. So I actually see the benefit of Carter's just in general. Yeah, right. But I wanted to do it differently. I just wanted to do it in a more um, not scripted, like a lot of Carter's, they have a set routine for a set purpose. I wanted to do almost like a free flow, like our improv dance. Mm. But with martial arts. Yeah, it's interpretive. Yeah, sort of, yeah. Yeah. And so whatever I was feeling at that time, so if I was a bit peaceful and, you know, I'd take the bow down the beach because it's a big windy thing. You can just spin it and sort of, I don't know, it's a little bit like when you're a bit of a carefree sort of state of mm. mode. So I just set the camera up. I waited about 5.30 when the sun was going down. I was like, all right, I'll just turn the camera on for 15 minutes and just have a play. No. Nah. Yeah. And that's what came out. That's it. Yeah, so that's what I've sort of been doing lately and I'll pick up a few extra weapons. Um, I'm thinking of doing an axe carter. Mm. Like a Viking style axe That cutter. Ragnar Lothbrok that, straight up. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, that'd that'd sick. man that'd be, start growing your hair, man. That'd, yeah, that'd, be, be, that'd be off tap. That'd be sick. Man, so. I nearly witnessed a, a full-blown like fucking physical confrontation today on my lunch break uh, in Hurston. I was um, walking across the street and I watched this dude come out of like the um, guest hotels there or something. I think a lot of people are in town for Eka, so there's lots of people flying in from country and stuff like that. Yeah. Anyway, this dude was coming down the stairs and he looked a few years younger than me, but sort of like, you know, white guy, sleeveless shirt, like a couple of tats, like didn't look rough, but, you know, like looked like a, a lad of sorts. And um, Uber driver rocks up on like a a motorbike, like a Mitsubishi motorbike or something like that, and hands him his food and then it's like all sweet. And these two are like walking off in opposite directions in front of me as I'm crossing the street. And the guy, like the younger guy, turns around and he's like, 
oh, you fucking cunts, like fucking hell. And just starts screaming like sea bombs at this bloke and starts like charging towards him with his bag of like, um, with his bag of Uber Eats. And it's like, he pulls out like a Macca's bag and I can see that maybe some sauce or a drink has spilled or something. But he's like screaming sea bombs at this like um, <laughs> Middle Eastern guy that's just sort of like wearing his helmet, like got off his motorbike, just coming over, has no idea what's going yeah. on and shit. And so I'm sort of just like, I'm just going to stay here just like just one in case, second in, that, in case... Gets yeah, in case this something. guy throws like a haymaker or something, I'll pull him back. I'll, but I'll prevent the ground and pound. I'll the follow-up ground and yeah, pound. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah, not going to stand yeah. in front of the punch, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. if it gets too far, yeah. I'll pull him off. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll Herb Dean that shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's had enough. <laughs> He's had enough, mate, to like yeah, yeah. come down. Stop, stop, You spilled stop. your sweet and sour. <laughs> we'll tackle him, take him off. But it's just... um, it's He's out. He's out. <laughs> it highlighted to me, man, just how, you know, if, if people that, d- that don't have an outlet, they can just fucking snap, man. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're in in a situation where your sweet and sour sauce spilled a little bit through the Uber Eats bag, but just after the morning you've had, it's just the absolute tipping point and, yeah, you, just, and you decide to like king hit a king hit your Uber yeah. Eats driver or something like that. I don't know. It is. I, think, I think it's important for people to have some sort of outlet. And it's rough. Like we watch... We watch fights and all the combat sports and it's lights, camera, action, big crowds, promo girls. Like it's a, it's a production yeah, event. You see but the Hollywood see, side of it. Th- absolutely. Yeah. Where you, yeah. you, you see it in the street down in Hurston at 12 o'clock on a, on a Thursday it's not and it's fun. like, yeah. it's not, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I think being a fight fan, you have much more of an appreciation for the fact that you never know who you're tangling with. And yeah. there, there are people out there that are so much yeah. more skilled than yeah, you that will yeah. just dismantle you in a matter of seconds. People that are even, like half your size, mm, you know what I mean? They don't even look at... They might not even like look at... It, like the, the old business dad. Yeah. Mm. So if you can't, if the you can't back the yeah, talk yeah. up, then, then it's best not to talk. Yeah, you know? 100%. Like, yeah. But it doesn't prevent people from having altercations and shit like mm. that, especially road rage. It's we get in out, a different psychology outlet, when man. we're in a car. I, right? I saw a road rage at, uh, on the way home from work the other day where a guy's just... Screaming at the wheel, he didn't car in front of him didn't make the red arrow, so he's he's there at the traffic lights. So he's going absolutely screaming at this vehicle in front of him, and I've sort of like you caught, wanna, it caught my. Do you just want a water, bro? Um, what's one of those? The oh, snake? you want a wh- white Russian? Yeah. All right, I'll make you. One. I want a white Russian, <laughs> blonde, <Some> big Lebowski <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had one. Uh, tell us what's in a white Russian. Cold pressed coffee, yeah, soy milk. Or is it is there normal milk or is it just soy? Just soy in the house, guys. Ooh. Ooh, just soy. Yeah. Um, Lardy Dale. Zimmel. Zimmel. <laughs> I is, drink Zimmel. What is Zimmel? I drink Zimmel. Yeah. What's Zimmel? It's just lactose free. It, yeah, it's probably full of poison. Yeah, all yeah. the other shit that's in it. It's probably no good. But yeah. Oh, we got organic full cream here. There we're at. That's where we're at. Organic full cream white Russian. Here we are. The uh, so the pull up to the yeah d- the guy doesn't get the red arrow at the traffic light in the car in front of him and it's a lady in the car and the bloke behind him in a in a car is just screaming like oh, you d- fucking d- slut is he the one that yeah. punches her and uh, no no this was just on the way home the other day from oh, work yeah, that right. I saw and I've locked eyes with this dude and I'm like oh hang on like I shouldn't be looking at this like this dude standing in his car I don't need to be looking at him now raging off in his car fucking yeah and he's sort of like just putting out spot fires sort of thing. I'm just like, nah, just fucking on your way. Like, yeah. It's crazy. Man. Move on, mate. Like, t- yeah, that's right. In terms of an outlet and stuff, there's no, uh, I've got no reason to just fucking bite down on my mouthpiece and swing hands. Uh, 100%. And, like, <laughs> and, I, and I, th- I think, I think everyone has a different way of doing it as well. So if you look at, if you look at combat sports, you've always got that violent, when you think about it, violent mm. physical outlet, like an aggressive, contact style physical outlet that humans I think that we need Mm. we need that but certain people cope with uh, with life differently so someone who's naturally got their adrenaline it's constantly going and they're quite hyped up and they're naturally quite aggressive having an outlet where you're banging something and just getting stuck in another bag or getting stuck into someone else inspiring for me I actually found was worse True. Because all I wanted to do was get in competition mode. Yeah, right. And all I wanted to do is go back and compete and fight. And it was an ego thing. Yeah. It was a dick measuring contest. True. It was all like, I just want to go down that and fight, 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 win. 
and I lost that sort of uh, the old way of thinking. When I first did martial arts, I was obsessed with the the art side of it. Mm. Obviously, the way self expression, real. Obviously, none of that fantasy shit, the chi ball stuff, but you know, real, real traditional way of training and thinking mm. and putting yourself in a good state of mind and trying to be a decent human. That's it. You I forgot about all that, man. I just lost it because it was all because. Uh, I've got an addictive personality. Mm. I wanted to just compete and I wanted to win and just became about that. And I sort of, I found as a martial artist, I lost my way a little bit. And I actually think a lot of them go through it. Mm. I think that's a constant battle that anyone with a highly competitive nature and naturally an aggressive sort of person, I think if your outlet is just hitting, you know, and wrestling and an aggressive style of outlet, Mm. It's not actually doesn't actually calm you. Mm. For the ones that are actually completely calm, having that aggressive outlet. Of introverts, I think, benefit from an aggressive outlet. Extroverts, I think, need that more peaceful sort of serenity to sort of silence the mind a little bit. Balance out the yin and yang yeah, side it is. of the it is. And coin. I guess yeah, yeah, like left side, right side brain. Sort of like uh, John for me is a perfect example of that. Jones, where yeah, he'd be like is a killer. But away from the cage, if you bumped him, di- bumped into John down at Whole Foods and you said, hey, champ, how's it going? He would... Uh, How's that white Russian dog? Man, that's fucking... That's impressive. <laughs> that's That cold press. Cold press coffee. Stonehand Cold Press, the uh, first official sponsor of the knockoff. Yeah? We're on board. Yeah, Let's but his plug. Let's <laughs> give it yeah. more of a plug. That's yeah, it. First sponsor. That's it. Give this him is, a shout this out. The, so this is who the, are these guys? Uh, Stonehand Cold Press. Jakey, a guy we went to high school with, started his own Uber Eats Sort of spec with cold press coffee. You contact yeah. him through Instagram. He'll deliver the uh, the bottle directly. What's to his you. Instagram? Uh, at Stonehenge Cold Press. So, All right. Yeah. Give, I'll give, to him, give him a yeah. look. It's a, yeah, good product. It's good podcast. Good fuel. coffee, man. Yeah. Pod- yeah. Pod- I'm fussy. Podcast fuel. I'm fussy. That's good coffee. Ex stone stonemason turned uh, coffee maker. Mm. Yeah. It was a stonemason. Yeah. 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 Hence the name. Hence the name. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Sp- stone- That's pretty impressive. Stonemason. Uh, <laughs> Get him. We'll get him on for an episode too. You got Definitely. an interesting tale where it's all all through his Insta and stuff. But uh, was a stonemason, ended up breaking his back, and then oh, uh, it was worked what, his way back. While he was and, working, uh, I'm not sure on that sort of. No, I don't think it was a break. I think um, yeah, he had a uh, disc blowout or something like that. His disc, yeah, bulging right. disc or something. Yeah. Just yeah. just as fucking serious. Mm. And uh, it's, it's now started his stone. Stone cold, uh, stone hand cold, press. stone cold oh, yeah. hand press. <laughs> <laughs> That's your new promo. Yeah, stone hand said so. <laughs> How good was Stone Cold? $3. Speaking 16. of WWE, that was probably the era that I was watching it when The Rock and Stone Cold, The Undertaker was still in it. Mankind, mankind, mankind he was, he was big. One. Don't See, tell me you you're a mankind fan, Mr. Sarko. I uh, hated Foley. <laughs> yeah, hated really, Mick Foley. Foley. Yeah, hated him. I, uh, I'll See, would you not as a person like, now? Yeah. just as a character then, as yeah. a kid, I hated him. I was all Stone Cold. And then I was Rand- I was Randy Orton. I became yeah Randy Orton. I became yeah. a big fan because yeah. just as young, I didn't give a fuck sort of yep. dude. Yeah. yeah, Randy was cool. I lo- I liked it. Got down with a bit of Ric Flair. I remember when uh, <sighs> this buddy oh, of mine I hated, hated Ric Flair. I hate Flair. I only because uh, I think only because I uh, in in grade six went to uh, <laughs> went to a buddy in, buddy in primary school. <laughs> went to his, went to his episode like went to his birthday. Sorry. Yeah, and uh, I remember he got money from everyone, like his aunties and uncles and a few kids there. Their parents had put five bucks in there, and he wanted to get something completely something else. And I'm like, nah, you need to get WCW on, maybe like Super Nintendo or yeah, yeah, or even maybe PlayStation One back then. No, I think it would have been an older console. But yeah, I remember talking him into it. Like, nah, 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 we're at World for Kids at Aspley. Remember <laughs> yeah, World for yeah, Kids, that was like, massive. best toy <laughs> shop on the planet, like. It was straight out of Home Alone sort of shit. Like, that was, that, was, that place there. was the shit, eh? Yeah, and uh, we were playing all sorts of WCW back at his gaff, man, and his parents were raging alcos and would just get <laughs> absolutely <laughs> obliterated downstairs. Like, just a shout out to the parents. Until like 2.30. Good, good people, absolutely. Hard to gold on them, but geez, they love drinking piss. It's stuff like that that you don't really register as a kid so much. You, no. you don't really take it on board as, oh, yeah, that, that's alcoholism or, or yeah. anything like that. You're like, oh, that, that lady just fell over and she was just standing there. That's yeah. weird. Oh, like, but yeah, if, yeah. Just and then she blamed of... like tripping on the cord, but she didn't trip on the cord. Like, what's... <laughs> she smashed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit loads of durries I, I, inside. I, I, that was an early experience that I had of like one of mum and dad's friends as we as kids had been playing with their kids or whatever and it was time to leave after dinner and drinks or whatever. 
and and the orgy, like. the wife. Yeah, after the <laughs> swingers party finished, <laughs> <laughs> the kids came upstairs. <laughs> after that, all that showers. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this lady who was like the mo- the mother of this family, just falling over, like yeah. standing in, in in one spot. Obviously blind, but I was too young to recognise that she was blind. She was off pissed, and she was just basically standing there and just went, dunk. And and just <laughs> fell over, like didn't didn't step or anything, just like drunk people doing things. Falling spec, tree just, KO, just, yeah. yeah, fell fell down, and she was like, "Oh, it's that that cord there. I must have tripped on that cord." And, it was like, <laughs> and I remember just like it was an early memory because I was too young to really register. I was like, "She fell over and blame that mm. on the cord," but she didn't trip at all. Like, that was strange. Do you do you now? When did you when did it register? Like when did you bring that up again and go, "Hey, that chick was pissed." Yeah. You know when you come back to a memory yeah. and when you're now you're going, oh, that's what happened? What mm. the yeah. Fuck? yeah, yeah, not sure. I've got one of them where uh, a junior coach at um, Pine River's Pumas <laughs> Rugby Club. Oh, shout shit. out. Shout, shout out, out, man. Defamation yeah, case, yeah. here we yeah, come. Yeah. 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 Hold on, guys. Shall Hold on. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the yeah. way this is yeah. starting. Shall I've, <laughs> I've, I've got to admit. <laughs> Shall remain nameless. And these are all alleged. Like, this is, I heard this. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Where um no one can see you winking. Had, they had a they had a pa- well, had sure? a party at um like the en- end of year break up for the parents like where they all got on the sauce and they're all around a pool table and one of these boys <laughs> ends up going up to his bedroom and puts on um basically like a a jock strap with an elephant's trunk off the front that he'd put his sword in and was just walking around the party with, like with all the parents blind and that's something that stuck with me where I'm looking back. I think when you talk about memories <laughs> resonating, I remember being sort of like 17 or 18 to remember that and started like when I was like getting blind at that point. I'm like, geez, old, old mate must have been fucking sauce that night. Or what the fuck was that sort of party? Just a strange, strange memory like of all the shit in my life. I can still remember that. Like, because then he, he took me upstairs and um, <laughs> I remember in my 20s. I woke up with a sore butthole. <laughs> I remember my twenty first man, Brycey just walking around full nude, like just at the whole at the party, like talking to my just mum, out with a wanger. Like, alter alter shit. ego, bad. Like I've I don't get starkers, but just that that night was something else. <laughs> I'm not one of like you know how I, I was a, people... I was a starkers dude. Yeah, back in my heyday, I was yeah. a starkers dude. Just Look. on the piss. Even if it was just the boys, just we'd get loose, get nude. I'd just fucking get nude and jump in the pools and just fucking tackle and wrestle. This is what almost that was. really gay shit, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really aggressive gay gay feelings. <laughs> Heaps of Greco boys club shit. Yeah. This um, there was oil involved at times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we were like, um, even that I can remember being at that party. It was a house party up at Perigian, and there's like probably eighty people there, like a bunch of. Guys and girls and parents and shit like that <laughs> was that blonde. Just started like wrapping my nutsack around the pool fence and shit like that. And I remember waking up the next day being told all of this information. And I'm like, hook up to uh, Danny's folks the next day. Like, hey guys, like, uh, come on, come b- on. Believe, hey, I, believe hey. I might owe an, owe an apology. And they, they they just fucking laughed it off basically. Yeah. They were really good about it. Yeah. Um. L L J Hooker shout out. They uh they've blacklisted my parents. Um. From <laughs> LJ Hooker Perigian for <laughs> life. <laughs> Those fuckers. Yeah. After that. But they'd still be getting glass out of the bottom of that pool. <laughs> <laughs> like a six, 60, 60 person party, maybe. Yeah. 50, oh, well, 60. Yeah, it was for sure. 40 to 60. Yeah. I used to have some cool parties, man. Yeah. I remember some um, like hectic parties. Uh, shout out dad If you listen to this one <laughs> But dad used to work yeah, away from turn it off now <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every other week And, uh, and mum spent a bit of time When I was 17 Doing uh, Teaching English in Hong Kong So she was gone for like A lot of the year And Hence I was On my own Like Every sort of Few weeks You know For the whole week And uh, Did a bunch of shit man Like I ended up like dri- As a 14 year old Like driving the car like I was oh, 16 probably just before I got my license, but I'd still had some lessons and I was like driving the car pretty much everywhere, man. Just like <laughs> while they were gone, just like with, Dude, do you with know, no license. Do you know what's scaring the fuck out of me right now? Is if we could somehow get my cousin on the show, he would say that's what I was getting up to word for word. Yeah. My mum was actually in China as well. Yeah, true. My mum was in China on and off doing work and shit right. like that. And I had the house to myself for ages. My dad was in England. 
I know yeah. these crazy parties I'd take I remember over, like, yeah we had like a golden um, <laughs> nothing <laughs> crazy but I'd just be no me I'm too I'd just drive it around, around like my yeah. daily yeah like, I was respectful hey like, what's up hey guys I'm I can drive <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm one of you guys <laughs> but I remember I remember one party that's crazy we had the the just thing, man. heaps that's of people rocked up to uh, to our old house out in Petrie and um, <clears throat> he used to have a swimming pool in the backyard and there was basically um, a fence and then a backyard and there used to be a trampoline in that backyard. So, like, we lifted the trampoline over the <laughs> fence to put it in the pool area. And it was basically packed wall to wall with people. And there was just, like, people jumping off the, the trampoline into the pool. There was, like, several chicks in the pool just with their tops off, just just chilling there, like, topless. There was, you know, also... It was, like, the ultimate, like, no parents... High school party. party yeah. that had no... There was one moment where like some gate crashers tried to rock up and that was the only negative thing there. The rest of the time was completely positive, man. It was just like, I remember walking around just like, this is the best party that I've ever been to mm. and it's mine. So. I'm hosting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's like... You got to claim it when, you, when, it, when isn't, it happens, you uh, claim that shit. Yeah, oh, for that was, sure. That was yeah. all time. That was yeah. all time. But the F- I, guess, I guess like 16, like 15, 16 maybe. That time. Isn't gate crashing a, uh, a strange concept? The really? It's like, this is our shit. Like we, w- these people are partying, but yeah. we're going to go there and we're yeah. going to fucking yeah. What the fuck? Oh, drink yeah. their piss. You remember some some yeah, barn crap. burner bloody brawls that would that would go on high school man high school parties. Holy, high school parties. Holy shit, that would still be going on hardcore. Mm. Probably more like stabbings and rough shit. It these was. Days. Yeah. I was around them when there were stabbings. The yeah. Wavell Wavel yeah. High School party. True. Yeah, the Wavell Heights man. Mm. Like it was a fairly rough school. Yeah, it was a fairly rough school. There was heaps of shit went on at parties. Yeah, I remember guys mm-hmm. pulling knives at parties and stuff like that. Nobody got stabbed that I knew of, but um, I remember there was a dude that one of my mates had a knife pulled on him one night. Yeah, very uh, like some sort of like kitchen like wouldn't cut butter with it sort of thing. It was mm-hmm. a bit of a it was a very like lo- I was standing there when he pulled it, and it was basically like a flick knife, but he it was just very low intentions he was trying to be really hard this guy was this this smaller sort of guy who had a reputation for having a really (coughs) rough older brother and and you know being in with with a rough crowd and i can't remember where's he now what's he doing now no yeah (laughs) be an accountant you know what i mean bourbon gary yeah yeah, yeah, (laughs) probably some fucking geek yeah i can't remember what it was even over but i just remember him sort of pulling out this knife and being like if you keep continuing that (laughs) <laughs> you know what will happen And then uh, And then my mate was like What are you going to fucking stab me? Like, Come on stab me like, I was like whoa It was this really hectic situation At, at another another party when our parents were home mm. Kids do that shit man eh? It's just like you know We're, we're still at that crazy age Dude we've grown up with pornography and rap I mean <laughs> let's be realistic Like that's what we've grown up MTV on MTV culture MTV culture yeah. you, you gotta fucking That's a real thing man And where the where the people like you have to no idea what you're doing, just don't you know? have a fucking you, you, clue. but you're you're ready to go with a bunch of your mates and fight a bunch of kids from another school that you don't know who the fuck they are Could or anything. anything. Yeah, Dude's and it's out like of jail and shit. Like was, full on full on street even, brawl. Don't think you don't think properly back then. I reckon there was there was probably you know fifteen to twenty five different like fights that I can remember through mm. I reckon, high school uh, parties. There was a. Fellow we went to school with, his dad ended up getting starched like out the front by someone just ding like oh. Oh, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Like shout out to anyone that's had this happen. I apologize, but uh, if your dad's getting a flogging from a kid, mm. you you're pretty much demasculated. Yeah, no, I, th- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I think dead set. If some kid has just flogged your it, dad, I think it might have like, been. Uh, fuck, come on, mate, it's a fucking. It might have been cowardice though, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, if been, it is, yeah. if it is, yeah. then that's dog act. That's yeah. not the same thing. Yeah. But toe to toe, if it's yeah. Toe to toe, because I've I've sort of heard him, some of those up, things before. Put Never away, been around yeah. it, but I've heard that. Oh yeah, this this dad got flogged by old mate. It's rough really? to see a dad yeah. get involved too, like yeah. a bunch of kids your age, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, Mister Mister Stewart's fucking getting in there. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Here comes you know? Mister yeah. Stewart's fucking ground and pound. Yeah, <laughs> a forty eight year old there throwing twelve six like <laughs> <laughs> on a sixteen year old. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oy. That's when you Herb Dean that shit. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, man. Shit, boys. Well, it's been a uh, it's been a pretty yeah. awesome hit out for Thursday night late night yeah, edition. Man. Yeah, we've uh, we've all got shit to do tomorrow. I'm sure you're going to be uh, hitting the gym tomorrow, Josie. Is that the plan? Early morning session, then um, straight to work. So nice. Yeah, Friday tomorrow. 
Friday, fam. Fuck yeah. Right, yeah. Got the weekend coming up. We made it. It felt like this. Uh, it felt like this week went kind of quick for me. Same. I woke up this morning. I was like, yes, Thursday, son. See, this is like my Monday or Tuesday. Uh, okay. I work over weekends. Yeah. Uh, so shit. Like just getting fucking Different. Started. Different strokes. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. just come off a mad couple of days off then. Yeah, yeah. yeah nice. So I've just been chilling. Nice. Yeah. Sick, man. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you back. Always first, uh, first return guest. Okay. And uh, and yeah, we've got uh, we've got a few more things lined up. So stay tuned, fam. We're coming at you soon. Peace out.